Well, here we are with Mr. Ed Scrine. I just had that clarified for me that it's not screen, it's Scrine. Yeah, but at least it came from the man himself. Yeah. <laughs> so we got that out of the way. Yeah. No embarrassment here. Uh, so you're in the upcoming Transporter movie, which should be out by the uh, time? It'll be, when this airs, it'll be coming out this week. So, uh, yeah. So you, it comes out this week. And uh, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. It's good yeah. to be here. Yeah, you've, you're also in a couple other uh, upcoming projects that we're pretty stoked about. You've got... Uh, Deadpool and then uh, Kill Your Friends, which we just saw the trailer of. Which yeah, we just saw the trailer today. It looks absolutely great. Absolutely great. So, the way the show works, we get our viewers to send in questions uh, to ask our guests because we're not good at coming up with questions, but they are. <laughs> Very lazy yeah. of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah. We just pass the buck. Makes sense, though. We'll yeah. figure some out along the way. That's They're the brains, you're the beauty. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like we're it. just a mouthpiece for their. Uh, their Some people creativity. say that they're like nothing without their fans, but we literally are <laughs> yeah. because they give us the questions to yeah. ask. Great. Um, I have a question right off right off the bat, uh, and it kind of mirrors this, so it's not my question at all. But basically, uh, what, what was it like taking over this this franchise? Um, you know, something that that Jason Statham, who who has gone on to do such great things, kind of like established, and and it's kind of almost a passing of the torch. What was it like when you first got the call that this offer was on the table? Basically. I mean, from the beginning, I never really thought about it in terms of passing the torch and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of approached it like every job, just as a job in itself and yeah. a project in itself and, and something that seemed fun and, and, and something, yeah, that I could, that, that I would in, be able to grow and, and, and learn from. So I didn't really think about it in that I'm sense. I'm sure getting, in, getting to shoot in, where was that, Nice or? Uh... Yeah, I mean, it was beautiful. <laughs> I mean, actually, a lot of it we shot in Paris. Oh, okay. And it was chucking down with rain. So, um. It, it's strange when I watched the movie. I was like, "Wow, it really, it really works. It really feels hot and, and kind of tropical and beautiful." I would have mm. never guessed that was Paris. Mm. It, well, we shot the interiors in Paris. Oh, okay. And then we went down there for five weeks and shot all of the exterior stuff, mm -hmm. and you know, did all of the jet ski stuff. We didn't shoot that in Paris. I would <laughs> hope um, not. Jet skiing down the street. The of Paris. Seine. Yeah. yeah, that sounds fun. Though. Yeah. yeah, especially on the Seine. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, were you a fan of the previous films? I hadn't actually seen them. Oh, really? Yeah, they're, they're, they're with the huge catalog of movies that I'd never, yeah. that I haven't seen and that I'm, you know, 10 years later than everyone else to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, enjoy, I enjoyed them when I watched them and it was important for me to sort of gauge the vibe. And I don't know, maybe in hindsight, it's a good thing that I hadn't seen them and I'm not too, uh, you know, they're not going to impact and be too, too, they're not in the forefront of my thoughts when I'm shooting. Yeah, so you can make it your own kind of and, and yeah. go your own way with it. That's yeah, I mean, we, we can't do anything but make... Do yeah. be ourselves and and, yeah. and and you know do us and and you know just try and be the best um, best Ed Scrine that I can be. You know? <laughs> well, it would be pretty funny if you had just approached the whole thing like you were doing a Jason Statham impression. Yeah, <laughs> that would <laughs> so that's hard to do. Yeah, that would have been awesome in a different way. <laughs> yeah. Just like shaves the top of your head a little bit and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> a little more Cockney. Um, getting into cockney, one of the right? one of the fan. Questions. Uh, Insane Twig. Yeah, we say their usernames too, which are always great. Mm -hmm. Insane Twig <laughs> wants to know what drew you to acting in the first place, and are there any specific things that you look for in a script or a role? What well, a great question. I mean, what what drew me to acting was, you know, my friend wrote a a, a part for me in his movie. It was called it's a Plan B, Ill right? Manners? Plan B, exactly. Yeah. Ill Manners. Yeah. So he wrote that for me, and and that was the first project I'd ever done. So what drew me to it was, you know, exploring another craft, working with my best mate. Um, and, 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 you know, trying something new, you know, uh, and that seemed interesting and, and a challenge, you know, something that, you know, I shouldn't really be very good at and I have almost no right to do, to, to just go out and try to do. Um, and what draws me into scripts, I mean, really, it, it's, it's got to be character driven. It's lovely to, to read scripts when they're interesting and when they have, you know, a new twist, but there's, there's got to be something you know interesting about the characters and the ensemble and the piece and um it's not something specific like i don't just look for like action or, or independent european stuff you know it, it could be anything you know I, I kind of the fact that they're in black and white is a beautiful thing because you don't think of the budgets and the studios and mm -hmm. the things that are attached to it. it's just you know how does this make me feel in my gut mm -hmm. you know and what does my instinct say and and i followed my instinct so far and it's it's done me okay so you were, you mentioned the Plan B ill manners thing, but so before that, before that, you were mainly focused on like hip hop and producing and stuff like that, right? Yeah, we read some stuff about like you worked with Form Beggars and Plan mm -hmm. B, which like are are two hip hop artists that I know and love, and mm -hmm. I want I kind of want to know what 
how did you come up in that scene and and how did it evolve to where uh you know plan b gave you the the offer for the role Wow. Well, you know, I got into the the the, uh, the underground music scene when I was a teenager with Plan B. Oh, really? We we were in a, using a community studio in an area called Camden, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys know. Yeah. Um, and um, so we'd go there in our school holidays, and we'd go to this studio, and we could work in these amazing studios, and people would like believe in us and mentor us, and develop us as such. And um, so me and Ben um, were, you know you know collaborators and, and confidants as such like for the whole for like a, you know the whole decade and the whole time and it was an incredible time for underground music the uk hip-hop scene at the time was you know there was a lot of unity it was a really exciting time mm -hmm. everyone was together and there was this kind of entrepreneurial spirit which really drove um the, cre the creativity it was it was great you know mm -hmm. there was stuff popping off left right and center and it was a it was a great time you know it kind of taught me work ethic and gave me a sort of romance for art rather than just looking at of like, you know, I want to be a star. I want to do this. No, I want to create something great. I want to, I'm happy to work until seven in the morning, you know, uh, uh, on this and, uh, and possibly it doesn't, nothing ever happens with it, but it's the act of doing it and the creative process, which drove me back then. And it's exactly the same thing now. I'm all about the work. Mm -hmm. It's great to come and promote this. I actually enjoy all of this stuff, yeah. even though actors usually complain <laughs> about it, but the craft is what I enjoy. I'm yeah. happiest when I'm shooting. You see me on set, I'm dancing around and <laughs> I love shooting. I love working, you know, and um, it was the same back then, you know. Hopefully they got some of that uh, dancing footage for the bonus features of Transporter. Yeah, my dad <laughs> dancing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. Um, let's move on to another one. Um, I, I, oh, oh, yeah. St. Twig had another great one, oh, yeah. especially like the... He's on a roll. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the craft. He said, since, trans, since the Transporter series is known for the vehicle action... What was the first car you owned and what are you driving now? Oh man, my first car was a Renault Clio. I bought it for 150 pounds, <laughs> um, so like $200. It yeah. had duct tape holding the bonnet down. Nice. It was, but it was great though. It was yeah. my baby, it was my baby. Um, Good training car, you could beat it up and everything, not to feel too bad, I guess. Yeah, it was just great. It was yeah. not just, just great to have wheels, yeah. to be able to move around. Mm -hmm. I, you know, to me, it was like the Audi I drive in the transport. Yeah. Um, and I drive a Ford Focus. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm a humble man. Yeah. No, it's yeah. a good car. Good gas mileage. I love it. I Reliable. Love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I must say, you know, it's, um, it was wonderful to work in the transporter in such a beautiful car. Mm -hmm. And it really was a joy to it open my eyes to the luxury that yeah. you could have in cars. You know, the Bang & Olufsen stereo just rising up. <laughs> yeah. The parking sensors were just incredible. Even just the seat controls. Thing would give you a massage in between, <laughs> in between takes. We were like, so it wasn't a hard filming, chins. yeah, a hard filming session. You just pop up on the, uh, the oh, chair massage. That was it, was it was great, you know, and it was a joy. But at the same time, I don't, you know, need like I'm not really a high maintenance person, hmm. so um, it was a joy, it was a luxury, but you know, just that it was a luxury. So, do you live in the States now or are you still over in the UK? I'm in London, that's where, yeah. my, that's where my family is, that's where my, my, my friends are, that's my base. I'm, I'm so lucky I get to come to beautiful LA and travel all around but <laughs> yeah. um you know and live places that's the great thing about this job I get to like pitch up in Cape Town and go yeah find out mm. be there for four months and I don't know I'm going there until two weeks before and then it's like okay <laughs> realign okay now I'm going to Serbia now I'm going to Morocco now yeah. I'm going to France and uh, or Poland and, and uh, I recently shot in Vancouver that was wonderful you mm -hmm. know so it's a joy to be able to travel but home is home and I'm a proper Londoner for sure speaking of that Vancouver shoot it seemed like a lot of that Deadpool shoot was just out in the open. Yeah, Everyone was. was just watching it. It was <laughs> yeah. like nuts. The entire city just looking out their window watching that it, shoot. It's nuts because, you know, like Fox are very secretive. And mm -hmm. even like when I got offered the job, I couldn't read. They wouldn't let me read the script unless I went to the casting directors, signed the confidentiality agreement. It was on red paper so you couldn't fo photograph it. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't send me a script. I went all the way to Vancouver. I still didn't have the script. Um, and so all of this secrecy, and then we shot it out in public. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just insane. But it was cool, though, that. because it, it, on social media, it really built up this buzz because people could see the suit and people yeah. could see all yeah, the yeah. stuff and they were like, oh, wow. And, you know, you see some of it, but really... You're like, not seeing this, all of it, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm so excited about. And same thing with the trailer, you know. We, we released this trailer that's obviously, like, blown up, but we've, we're only giving you a <laughs> tiny bit. Good. There's so much more that we haven't shown you that... that um, that, that, that we shot. So well, it's like, yeah, at this point, it's built-in marketing. It's like on our show, that's kind of 
on one of our shows, we do an entertainment show, and it's like our bread and butter of being like, oh, there's a new shot of this, there's a new shot of that, there's yeah. a new transporter trailer, there's a new uh, like Deadpool yeah. shot of them on a bridge in Vancouver or whatever. And yeah. people just like they love they love getting this like drip feed of it's information, a teaser. exactly, and it, and it builds up the excitement for yeah. the movie too. Exactly. I was just looking this morning at the um, the leaked pictures of Black Panther. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, that looks cool. They had the same problem like on the set of Suicide Squad. They were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> they're just filming the entire movie out in the open. The whole public can see mm-hmm. everything that's going on. It's, it's a funny way to do it. Do you guys have any interaction with like when you were driving around in, in the south of France on the coast or anything like that, like people just coming up and being like, what, what the hell is going on? It seems like a pretty unique place to film. Yeah, not really. Not really. I mean, the, the nice thing that I really love is there's, I think it's the closing shot in the movie where they, they pan out yeah. and have a big aerial shot and I drive around. I was just driving in normal traffic. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd literally we'd start in the car park and they'd say, um, you know, when we tell you to go, go. And it'd be like, okay. And I didn't know where the camera was. You know, and it's such a beautiful uh, panning shot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I didn't have a clue what was going on. I was just driving with the traffic, you know. <laughs> Which is great. Someone's in front of me and behind me. Yeah, it looks like a, a nice place to drive. Yeah, nice, yeah. pretty really scenic. Drive. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. They need to get better cop cars over there, though, because they just, <laughs> they just yeah. tumble and roll really easily. They really do the little Peugeots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so did you do a lot, of the, a lot of the driving in the film, or, or did they give you any kind of guidance or training as far as any kind of stunt driving? Yeah, they gave me some, some, some great training, which was, like, you know, so fun to be able to, like, go out and do that with, you know... Michel Julien, who's a, a legend in the game. Um, so, so yeah, but I mean, a lot of it was just too dangerous. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. With the fight in, I was like, I'm doing it. I'm yeah. doing it. Let me in. I need to prove to myself, let alone you guys, I need to do this, you know? And like, you know, it's my face. You can kind of tell when it's a, a double. I can usually tell yeah. anyway. It's ridiculous when yeah. it's like, bang, bang, and then the actor pops now up. He's got a yeah. mustache. You know, it's, so I, that was really important to me. But the driving, I was like, take it away, guys, mm-hmm. you know? That looks crazy. Yeah, I'm more Plus, than if you, if you, you wreck the Audi, you're, you're probably going to be on the hook for a little bit of it. You don't want to wreck that yeah. Audi. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to wreck that Audi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We went to a, a race course uh, on a trip recently, and it was like, okay, yeah, here's the drifting area. And it was just, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. It was just... It's, yeah, there's like this shot of, of, <laughs> uh, of, of both of us kind of like... St- they were like, yeah, you just get in the car and you just start drifting. And we're like, okay. And so we did. <laughs> and there's like a shot where we're like our hands are off the wheel. And it's just like, <laughs> I have no <laughs> control of this vehicle. <laughs> I have no idea what this car is doing. But good fun, though. Yeah. No, it's a ton of fun. Uh, how, how much of it do you think that like actually made in the movie that was you versus versus like a stunt driver? Like, obviously, the airport chase sequence is one of the most intense in the, in the film. But there's a lot of like, you know, beautiful scenic driving. I mean, all of the green screen stuff was me. Yeah? Oh. Yeah, I was good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Great yeah. at driving when the car's not moving. Yeah, yeah. No, there was some, I mean, there's some of it. Um, but the crazy stuff where, like, the car's spinning around and doing all that yeah. stuff, no, that's yeah. not me. Oh, okay. All but the, the fight like, scenes, all the fight scenes and stuff, you actually the orchestrated. Me, and... Yeah, that was important to me from the beginning. You mm-hmm. know, we trained so hard on that with Alan Figlars and his incredible team. You know, we worked so hard. It was like, I've put in so much work. I have to do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Now, had you had any, like, martial arts training before... Getting this role? None. I'm a ve- I've always been very physical, you know, I've always loved changing my sports, you know, and, and, and trying different things and endurance sport is my background. So, mm-hmm. you know, I had stamina, I had an engine. Yeah, like, you're a swimmer, right? Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I had an engine. So, you know, uh, that was a start, but I had to learn from scratch, dude. I was there like three and a half weeks before, like <laughs> two left feet and, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, trying to just making basic mistakes, you know, but you make those basic mistakes enough times, you have great teachers, you have great coaches, you work hard at it, you know, you, you eventually you stop making those mistakes, you know. So, like a muscle memory type thing. Exactly, yeah. you know, but I mean, what, what I will say is that this is my foundation, what you witness in this movie is the beginning, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, you know, already better than that and I can't wait mm-hmm. to keep improving, yeah. and to keep stepping it up and I'm proud of what we did, yeah. truly, you know, but um, this is like, you know, this is the, this is... 15% potential, yeah. you know, I'm going to kick some ass. <laughs> it's definitely like shot in a way where it wasn't like, they didn't chop it up a whole bunch. Yeah. Like I mean, you a lot definitely of, tell like it was you and you guys were action, touching yeah. each other. Big time. Touch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that came out wrong. No comment. Um, <laughs> but no, we, we, we did shoot a lot of it as masters, mm-hmm. you know, and that was a very diff- different way from how we shot Deadpool. Mm-hmm. You know, we did do some masters, but that was very cut up and specific with the shots there. With the, with, with the way we did it was just like, you know, 
big masters and all real life, which fits in with the cars as well. There was no CGI. We crumpled a lot of metal. We trashed yeah. a lot of cars, you know? Again, with Deadpool, there's a lot of CG and stuff, which is incredible, you know, super, superhuman stuff. But they're two very different animals. And that was what was so interesting, shooting them, you know? It's a very different approach to, um, to capturing them. Uh, how, like, as far as the fight scenes themselves, what was the one that required the most choreography, like, as far as length or difficulty? Um, was there one that stuck out in your mind of being like, I'm never going to get this, and then you finally land it the, the, when the camera's rolling or anything like that? The stuff in the utility closet. Um, in oh, the yeah, club yeah, yeah. With those big dudes. That yeah, that was like that was a crazy, math yeah. problem. Like I, I was <laughs> yeah. watching this, like how the hell did he even know like which drawers to pull out? And yeah. there's five guys crammed into a little mm. hallway. Yeah, and there's the whole sequence before that. And then you've got the Dyson Hoover and all of that. Yeah. Stuff. Oh yeah, you know that was the longest piece, um, and we worked really hard on that. But also the opening piece in the garage, you know, or garage. That was like real hard. Um, a lot of prep that went into that. I mean, the scene that was probably the most difficult in a sense was the scene with the moving car mm -hmm. you know even reading the script i was kind of like how are we going to shoot this yeah, yeah. we're not going to use a moving car are we and got there and was like we're not doing this for real are we? they were like you're doing this yeah like, yeah that's fine i'm not scared <laughs> at all i'll be fine yeah i'm the transporter but um you know we prepared but we prepared without a moving car mm -hmm. and then the day before we started to work with the you know the moving car and it was kind of like it was a remote control. Yeah. yeah. There was a dude behind the camera, like, you know, with the greatest remote control car, the most expensive. At yeah, least. yeah. <laughs> and, um, but that was the first fight sequence we shot. So that was the only time I was kind of like, oh man, you know, I've got to bring it. You yeah, know? you have to like time it perfectly. Perfectly. Too, and it was, the, yeah, and a diff difficult sequence and my first big set piece. So I was kind of nervous, but after the first day, I was like, bring it on, you mm -hmm. know? And after that, it was just, Full, all systems go and just, you know, enjoy it, you know? Awesome. Very cool. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying our little talk with Ed Scrine, but yeah. time to pay some bills. Last football season, DraftKings.com crowned more millionaires than any other fantasy sports site anywhere. And this season, you, Ooh, you could start the season by winning $2 million in just week one. It's the biggest fantasy football contest ever, including two million for first place and one million for second. There's no season long commitment nope. that you have to just drag yourself through. It's basically fantasy football on demand, like so many other good things these days. You mm -hmm. just pick your players, pile up the points, pick up your cash, and then you go spend the cash. Yeah, guys, this isn't fantasy as usual. This is DraftKings, baby. Welcome to the big time. You've just been called up. Yeah. Just a few preseason games to go. Get off the bench! Yeah, the regular season's coming right up, so hurry to DraftKings.com now and use promo code INSIDE. Still haven't fixed it. Yep, to play free for a shot at the $2 million top prize in the week one Millionaire Maker. Enter INSIDE. Still haven't fixed it. INSIDE. Again, that's INSIDE. Yeah. For free entry now at DraftKings.com. Again, DraftKings.com. What's that address, Elliot? DraftKings.com. Oh, DraftKings.com. Let's get back to Ed Scrine. I feel like we've left, left him waiting a little bit there. Damn it, he's gonna be pissed. He's probably lonely. He's scary. He's scary. Let's get on to another one. Uh, this is one from Panda Pool. Mm -hmm. uh, asks, how, how familiar were you with Deadpool and or the comics in general before being cast in the movie and how familiar are, are you with them now? You said like with Transporter, it kind of benefited you in a way that you didn't know too much about the movie series before yeah. going into the role. W was it something like that or were you aware of I mean, being ever the optimist, yeah. I think it benefited me hugely that I knew Deadpool inside <laughs> out yeah. and I knew the Marvel Universe mm -hmm. inside out. So in their both of their ways, respectively, mm -hmm. I think it helped. So a huge comic book fan then. Huge yeah. comic book fan. I mean, Spawn was my guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to love oh, yeah. Al Simmons and all of that. And, you know, the X-Men Age of Apocalypse, that was a, a great time for me. I recently went back and read all the Alpha Omega stuff and all of that stuff it was great. And, um, you know, the Violator miniseries and the Overkill stuff on Image. I was a huge fan of that. So, Did you, you know, have any of those Todd toys? No, so <laughs> no. He was like the first one to make like really violent, yeah. like comic book toys. Yeah, yeah they were incredible. Not for kids. But even even the artwork, you know, when I when I go back and I see what Todd McFarlane was doing on Spawn, like it's incredible. Yeah, you know? yeah. it's incredible the way his 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 cape is so intricate and it's such an important part of it. It's a character, almost like how the car is a character in the transporter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cape is a character. And it's um, not easy to draw that either. No, <laughs> no. I mean, it's it, yeah, I used to just draw the face, yeah. the spawn yeah, head. I, I can do the mask. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a huge, huge, huge comic book geek and, and I still am. So to be able to go to places like Comic-Con 
is a dream. Yeah, yeah and now, know. like, I'm sure that n- next year you're going to go there and just not even be able to walk around anymore. It's not going to be... I, it's going to not be fun for you next year, finally. You're going to be like, no, oh, I'll, I can't see Dude, can't I'll be it. dressed as Spawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be going around. People oh, will be yeah. taking pictures of me because they think I'm Spawn. <laughs> um, you know, or I'll go dressed as Deadpool or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, Hide under Deadpool. But is, is that, is it, like... What kind of experience was that for you when you got like that kind of offer where it's something that, you know, that you've loved for your whole life and then you, well, I get to be a part of this? Is that? I'd say like the only other time it was like that was Kill Your Friends. Yeah. You know, that Kill Your Friends was a novel that, that I'd read. Uh, when you were in the music industry as well. It, yeah, to not, a point. I mean, same, it's a very time, different, yeah. this is the commercial music yeah, industry yeah. in the 90s and stuff, very different time. But, but yes, but um, it was a dream. It was literally a dream, you know, even just to see that, that both of the names, I remember the times I got the emails like, kill your friends. I was in South Africa. I was like, wow. And I've <laughs> never, I yeah. prepare a lot for my, inter- uh, for my auditions. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, really, I go over the top. Yeah. Like I spend days working on, it. I really enjoy auditions. Kill your friends. I work so hard. And I was shooting <laughs> another movie obviously at the time. Yeah. And I was like, don't forget to concentrate on the movie. You've got, you've actually <laughs> got a job to do. Don't just start working too hard on the next one. And then yeah. with Deadpool, it was the same. I saw the header at the top and it said X-Men Origins Deadpool. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> wow, I need to prepare for this, mm-hmm. you know? But it, it, yeah, it was a joy. It was a joy. And then to, to get the role um, was a joy, you know? But that's only the start. The, the, the idea of doing things, you know, uh, the idea of things can be very different from the reality mm-hmm. and you know it's like they say when you meet your star you meet your your heroes and yeah. stuff it's a letdown so that was probably quite dangerous stepping into Deadpool in that sense that it could have been a huge letdown but mm-hmm. it wasn't man you know Tim Miller the director is a you know a, a visionary he's a lovely he's a top bloke and he's you know he's a it friend of like mine one of those movies that's like it's it's straight up fan service like it wouldn't have been made yeah. without the fans yeah. And, and it's made by fans. It may, yeah, and like Ryan, we are fans. Yeah, exactly. The fact that Ryan Reynolds had already sort of been through something like that, yep. where with Green Lantern, where yep. he was all excited oh. to do it, and then it just yep. and X Men Origins, and then the X Men yeah. Wolverine well, yeah. movie, you know, so it's kind of unfinished business. By the way, he's the second uh, X Men <laughs> person we've had on the podcast now. Oh yeah, we had Oscar. We had Apocalypse. Oscar Isaac. In, okay. Yeah. Great it, actor. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um. um I can't wait to see what they do with that. I'm so excited. Oh my God, yeah. Just hearing that they were going to do Apocalypse and everything was like, okay, you know. Um, But um, no, I mean, like, you know, to have people, the collective energy of like the enthusiasm of myself, Tim Miller, Ryan Reynolds, Mm -hmm. all of that is like incredible. And I was given all the graphic novels, like the Daniel Way collection. Yeah. I was like to Brianna Hildebrand, who plays Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Yeah. Coolest name in cinema. <laughs> it's, it's awesome, yeah. And like Gina Carano, uh, TJ Miller, all of them. I was like, you need to read these. You need to know who Deadpool is. The Daniel Way collection is the best collection. You know, take this and, and, and run with it. Give it back to me when you're finished. And, um, you know, that was great. You know, it was a, it was a great energy. Yeah. Where in like, that movie has such a weird, like, history of, of starts and stops. Yeah. Like, had you been aware of how they had sort of tried maybe considering making it and then it just disappeared. You know what's crazy is, yet again, just like me saying that, you know, I'd never seen the transport and stuff is I hadn't seen the test footage. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? It was only when I got the audition, I was like, let me Google it. Oh, there's (laughs) test footage. And I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my (laughs) life. I have to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to work even harder now. I'm now not going to sleep, you know? Um, And, 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 and so, yeah, I hadn't seen it. I, I didn't know all of the struggles and hearing about them later was, you know, fascinating. But, you know, it's not rocket science. Of course, the studio is going to be apprehensive about greenlighting a project like that. You know, yeah. he's so volatile and he's so sort of unmarketable in a lot of senses. But I think it's going to work out for what him. They're seeing now, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What they're seeing now, in fact, he's incredibly marketable. Yeah. You know, and actually you can put him into other realms like the stuff with Mario Lopez. You couldn't put Magneto and those guys in it because it would take them out of their, yeah. their yeah. place the, in the, the Marvel fourth universe. fourth wall uh, breaking well, it's also, of it. It's also too, it's like what happened in, what is it like the 60s or 70s with comic books having to mature. There's an audience out there for, you know, not like adults only type 
comic book movies, but def- but certainly like the the type of movie that would draw at least seventeen and up, yeah. like in droves to the theater. And this is j- this I think this is going to be a proof of concept of that. I hope so. You know, yeah. I hope it, it makes them braver in their in their in the stuff that they greenlight. You know, it's definitely going to all the seventeen plus. They're going to love it. But you know, there's like a band oh, of like ten yeah. year olds oh, yeah. plus who are going to be gonna like swarm the theater you know, and overtake all of the. Uh, no, the they're going to be pi- you know yeah. they'll get the DVD or download it on yeah. iTunes yeah. And, and they're going to love it because it's potty mouth. You know, it's, oh, yeah. it's exactly what we felt when we read Spawn and, and X-Men and Deadpool back in the day. Yeah. You know, it's that same thing of like, I can't believe you just did that. Yeah. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and he does that. Yeah. Uh, we'll do one more about that really quick and then uh, talk more about the movie that's coming out this week. But uh, th- kind of going back to like you said that you got to work with people like like TJ Miller, who's just like one of the funniest dudes working right now. Um, David M8 asks, were there any scenes that you guys had to do over and over again because either Ryan or the cast and crew kept laughing too hard during filming? Or was there any kind of like scene that just had you busting up? It, it, well, I mean, my first scene that I shot, yeah. I came in, what a baptism of fire. It was me and Gina walking into a uh, Weasel's bar. Mm-hmm. Um, without giving you any spoilers, you know, it was basically, you know, me, me speaking to Weasel and um, who TJ plays. Yeah. And it was just like... <laughs> He's just too funny. He's yeah. the funniest guy. His voice is speaking voice ever is just... But he kept doing this face of like. <laughs> and so when he was off camera and I was there looking at him and he'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> listening to me. It was like TJ, man. And actually, that was one of the few times ever yeah. that I was just like laughed and was like, I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. And I felt so bad. It was my first day shooting. Mm-hmm. I pride myself on my professionalism and, and, and all of that. Yeah. And I broke it that day. Yeah. And it's all TJ Miller's fault. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good that you got it out of the way on the first day. Exactly. Or, and you know, it didn't continue, maybe. I don't know. But then there were other times with, with, with Ryan where, um, you know, I remember this. Well, you saw in the trailer where, where he says Posh Spice. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So he had about, you know, every take we did, he did a different one. And then he'd be like, come, like, what's another English, British thing? Like, tell me. And we'd like <laughs> throw them out. Then he'd try it. And, and, you know, there's a lot of things. There's something he says about... Um, Gina, Angel Dust character, I can't yeah. remember which one he said in the trailer, which one they used, but like there's so many different ones, but we would wait and I'd be off, off camera like, <laughs> and then they'd go cut and everyone would go, ah, and everyone yeah. would be laughing and you know, it was that kind of atmosphere. And when I watch like Will Ferrell movies and, uh, and like, you know, Ricky Gervais stuff, yeah. you can feel that energy that people are riffing and you know, it's all spur of the moment and yeah. it felt that was the first time I'd felt that on set mm-hmm. and um, it, it really made me think I want to do more comedy oh yeah for you sure. know I kind of have to be the straight guy because <laughs> yeah. I'm not the funny guy and that was another thing is like working with TJ Miller and Ryan Reynolds makes you realize you're not funny <laughs> yeah you know so I just knew that it was kind of the same thing in Transporter like it seemed like uh, Ray Stevenson exactly like, it, he's the he yeah. just seems like a he would be a very funny person. Yeah, yeah just a around. joy to be around. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, we're just like, I would love hanging out with that man. All, like, <laughs> I wish the he was my movie. real dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But actually, he, my dad came to set and the two, watching the two of them hang out together was so funny. You know, it was so funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and they got on like a house on fire. But Ray is exactly how he is in the movie. And our relationship is, exa- or was, exactly how it was in the movie when mm-hmm. we were on set. You know, I was very living a very disciplined life for that shoot. And it was very important for me to be this Frank yeah, Martin pedantic strict guy and I kind of separated myself from people somewhat mm-hmm. you know um, all the other cast probably think I'm so boring but when Ray was there he'd always just lighten things up and it's kind of the only time you see me lighten up in the movie yeah. is with Ray yeah. you know And but he was such a joy all the girls loved him all the crew loved him I'm sure he was exactly how he is on <laughs> camera yeah. off yeah. camera did you guys know each other before you shot no. Transporter? No. no. So you, but you, I, I'm assuming that he made you just feel comfortable right off the bat, and you guys kind of had that relationship at, from, straight from the beginning. Off. Straight off. I mean, by nature, we're actors, so we probably could have pretended to a point that we had a great relationship either way, mm. but only to a point. Well, it seemed very know? natural. Yeah. It was natural. We yeah. were cracking. We were, we, you know, we were cracking a lot of joke, and um, he's just a funny dude, man. I remember the first time he came to my house where I was staying in Paris, and and uh, we had a couple beers, and, and it was just like. You know, we were talking about the backstory and stuff, and we were like, we don't even need to do this, do we? We've got this. <laughs> Let's just go and shoot now. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, oh, very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well. So the, the, the script itself, like, there's a lot of, like, like, really, not that your character is not serious, but there's some funny quips and some cool one-liners and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Were, were any of those kind of on-the-spot moments, or, or was it all up to the script writers and, and uh, the people involved behind the scenes? I think the only one that I can take credit for is the one after that scene in the in the club mm-hmm. 
where I say something like, you should have just given me the key or I told you, <laughs> yeah. something like that. Because they were saying like, oh, maybe we should put a line there. And I was like, uh, how about we should? And they were like, great. I was like, are you sure? Did you get a writing you credit on the credit? Usually my ideas aren't very good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, in yeah. fact, I've got a check. Yeah, yeah, you got to get that writing credit. Um, well, it was, it was a great action movie. I, I enjoyed watching it. It was very cool to see the Transformer kind of take on this new life. Transformer. Oh, sorry, it's fine. <laughs> I'm going to say that over because we can scrine. cut this. Sorry. That was a, for, that was a slip. <laughs> I'm gonna say it over. Go now. see the new Transformer, Transformer movie. Yeah, Transformer. Thanks, refueled. Mark Wahlberg, for coming in. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, okay. So, uh, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, it was a great. It was a great movie. Like it was. It was great to see the transporter kind of be taken into a new kind of direction, and uh, I hope it continues on. And Thank you. Congratulations on it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And it's been an absolute pleasure today. And. All of this fan art is <laughs> incredible. I'm absolutely blown away. We'll get someone to do an yeah. okay. We'll, we'll email it over. We'll have your I'm people honored. talk to our people. Well, vice versa. this is enough, but thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Nice one, dude. Hey guys, thanks for watching uh, today's episode with Ed Scrine from uh, The Transporter Refueled, and also he's gonna be in Deadpool. I, he was very excited about Deadpool. Uh, if we saw you yesterday at PAX, awesome, yay! If we didn't, then maybe next time. Uh, we were at PAX yesterday, thanks to the game Dungeon Boss and Big Fish Games. Uh, we're gonna have a link in the description below so that you guys can go download their new game, Dungeon Boss. Please check it out. They were nice enough to send us a PAX, so yeah, uh, we'd really and, appreciate uh, it. Check it out. And we met so many Oh yeah, cool you were recording this beforehand, but I'm sure it everyone was, was really awesome. nice. There was like fans and games. It and was a great time. It rained a little bit. Oh yeah, that'll probably It happen. was quite a weekend. Yeah. So, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Dungeon Boss. Thanks, PAX. Thanks, everyone. Download their game. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.